Will you still help me? Yes. Will you still care? Yes. Everything you can ask God, he will still say yes. Because it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. But it has everything to do with him. Everything that we have has to do with him. Nothing has to do with us. I've got a choice. I can choose to walk with God or I can choose not to walk with God. I can choose to obey God and I can choose not to obey God. I can choose to hear his voice or I can choose to tune out his voice. I can choose to react like God would react or I can choose to react like I would react. But I still have a choice. And he doesn't change. No matter what choice I make, he says, I still love you. No matter what choice I give, he says, I still love you. No matter how I respond, he says, I still love you. And you be asking God, why? Do you still love me? He said, because I'm love. Everything about me is love. But God, I'm not doing right. I'm not acting right. I'm not saying right. I'm not walking right. And he said, well, just keep believing me. Keep trusting in me. Keep having faith in me. Your actions will catch up with your belief if you hang on to that. And we always just say, but God. And then God turned around and said, but what? I'm still here. The thing about God is God never pulls back. He stays in the same place. The thing that happens is we either pull back, we walk away, or we turn around. And God stands there and says, I'm right here. I've never left. Christians begin to play that, that verse. Sing that verse again. I want you to think about this verse. Because he's talking about clothing something that don't have a choice. He's talking about clothing and making something beautiful. And making something with splinter. And when you look at it, it catches your eye. It amazes you. And it don't have a choice. And every day he clothes it. Even if it don't rain, the dew is enough in the morning to make the plant survive until the rain comes. Go ahead.
open ears to be a of God that they can hear from you. Yes, yes. Father, right now, God, clear my mind, clear my heart. Holy Spirit, bring back to remembrance everything that He spoke. Father, speak to our situation, speak to our hearts. God, speak to us now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Lord, y'all, praise you, come down. Well, happy 4th of July.
Now, when it comes from him, it comes with authority, it comes with power, and it comes with anointing. Now, those three things together can set any man free. Mm -hmm. But it's still not me. It's him. Mm -hmm. So as we begin to pray, we're going to pray for our nation. But before we pray for our nation, we got to set it back in order. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Bible, God talks about Israel. And man, Israel was worse than what the United States ever could think about being in. I know people talk about the United States, we're going to hell in a breadbasket. No, we're not. Mm. We're not worse than some of the people that God chose to be his own chosen lineage. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, Israel in the Old Testament, kings were sacrificing their kids. Mm. Amen. Kings were killing their sons and daughters. Mm. And you talk about we got a bad in the United States. Why, why do we got a bad at? The only way we say we got a bad in the United States is because who's in the White House. Mm. And let me clarify this. Who's in the White House don't determine how the United States runs. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who determines how the United States runs is the church. Amen. That's why the church has gone silent mm. in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. In the last 20 years, they've passed all kinds of laws. In the last 20 years, they've done all kinds of things in the White House. In the last 25 years, the government, the uh, right, the left, the liberals, conservatives, I don't care what you call yourself, they've done everything they can to try to control, uproot, destroy, and it's not God's word, it's man. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what can destroy a man fast, it's another man. Where's the devil? How? The devil going to do what a person allows him to do. Mm -hmm. The choice is still the man. Amen. You can put it on anybody you want. Mm -hmm. I'm here to set the record straight. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that's happening in the United States can be directly pointed at the church, mm -hmm. the ecclesia, God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. yep. Instead of preaching the gospel from the pulpit, we preach politics from the pulpit. We preach Republican, we preach conservative, liberal, we preach Democrat, we preach who we want in the White House. Amen. And God has said, I'm bigger mm -hmm. than any man could ever be in a White House. Mm -hmm. See, what you don't understand is if you want to change the nation, it ain't going to be done by a man sitting in Washington. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you pick there, he can't change the nation. Mm -hmm. He can either bring it together. Or he can divide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. It ain't more divided than it is right now. Mm -hmm. It ain't just starting being divided. Mm -hmm. Let me clarify that. The person that's been ain't been long enough. He ain't the one to divide it. Mm -hmm. It didn't start with the president before. It didn't start with the president before that one. See, what we don't understand is the enemy is very decisive at what he does. It started way, way back. Amen. Because if I can get people to turn against themselves, mm -hmm. I've already won. I ain't got to do much damage. That's the enemy says. Mm -hmm. And that's what he has done because we have chosen people yeah. instead of chosen God. Mm -hmm. And anytime you choose a man or God, you can always expect the outcome to be terrible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we put a holy man. How are you going to put a holy man in the White House? Unless God calls him or ordains him, and that's his specific destiny. Mm -hmm. Amen. To go in the White House. Mm -hmm. Why? It's too corrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is not corrupt. Mm -hmm. It is too corrupt. Mm -hmm. Every president that's been in there has been corrupted by him. Mm -hmm. We had some, some that were good. So what has happened to the independence of the United States? What has happened to make our country such a disaster that we say we need God to bless our nation? Well, God has blessed the nation. He gave the church here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, we're praying for God to give us answers to do things that he's given us authority to do. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. no, he didn't. Yes, he did. I can agree with the president.
47 before this one is sitting down. What number this is? 47? It's 46? I don't know. Whatever number he is in the 40s. I didn't agree with, I don't agree with what he do. I didn't agree with the one that was before him that just got cut out. I didn't agree with the one that was before him. I definitely didn't agree with the one that was before him. Didn't agree with the one that was before him. Didn't agree with the one that was before that. It was one I loved, but I was such a little boy, I didn't have no influence. Because no matter what, you know what he did? He still taught his Sunday school class every Sunday being a president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he went down as the most worst president. Yeah. He didn't give up God when he got in the White House. Mm -hmm. Amen. He didn't let it change it. Mm -hmm. And we put our trust in a man. What has caused all the chaos in the United States? Now the church is silent. We got Protestants, we got the Episcopalians, we got the Evangelicals, we got the Holy Rollers, which they call the Pentecostal. We got all these movements in the United States. You need to check out all these people in the United States. God ain't gave nobody a word about what's going to happen and what they need to do. I'm not talking about a word of who's going to be in the White House. I don't care about the White House. That don't bother. All I care about is who's still sitting on the throne. That's right. Yeah. That, that's my yeah. name. Yeah. Who's yeah. sitting on the throne? Yeah. Because whoever's sitting on the throne, if I do what he said, then he'll take care of the White House. Yes. First yeah. Timothy 2 and 1. See, this is what the church has like to do. Now the church Pray for the nation. Well, he didn't tell us to pray for the nation. We well, ain't yeah, did. Well, yeah. He said, 1 Timothy 2, starting at verse 1, 1 to verse 4. First of all, then I admonish and I urge the petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings being offered on behalf of all men. For kings and who are in positions of authority or high responsibility that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life, and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness and reverence, and seriousness in every way. For such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior who wishes all men to be saved and increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. Okay. Where he said that? He said, pray for those. Now he's talking to the church. Now I'm not talking to the, if you ain't saved, you don't belong to God. You can do it, but this is specifically for the church. Mm -hmm. Because the church want to know why we ain't living quiet and peaceful lives right now. It ain't got nothing to do with the White House. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's got everything to do with we ain't done what God said. Instead of praying for the ones in authority, we bash them, we talk about them, we ridicule them, we pin them down, we Amen. spread gossip, we listen to gossip. We've done everything with what God said to do. Amen. He didn't tell me to agree with him. Because if I don't pray for them, I ain't going to have no peace. Jesus. And you know who don't have peace right now? It ain't the world. It's the church. Yes. Because all the laws will be passed against the church. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And then we want to cry mm -hmm. and talk about a man in Washington, D.C. Mm. Yep. If you born again, it ain't got nothing to do with a man. And if you ain't know what God says, shut your mouth. Because you are the reason we're in the mess. We're in right now. Yo, yo. Yo. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. That's part one. That's why the United States is in such terrible shape. The United States, it ain't so much as the world passion, the leaders, it's the church yeah. that has stood 
read an article. Article made me cry because the article was really interviewing people between the ages 18 and 26. And these were young people who did go to church that said they'd never step back in the church again because the man that they trusted that preached the gospel had turned from the gospel and started preaching parties. Preaching about a man that they supported. Preaching about everything that they had told them and had taught them, they was preaching against that, now because of a man that they wanted in the office. And the young people said, I won't go back into a church because we can't trust the preacher man My God. to be who God has called him. But you trust me, I ain't preaching a party line. <laughs> Uncut, unfiltered, mm -hmm. straight gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Yes. Take it or leave it. You can't shut me up. You can't fight me up. You ain't never got to like me. You ain't got to stand by me. As long as you with me, I'm good. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank so you. what can bring a nation to its knees? Verse 4, he says, he wishes all... Ain't it amazing how God says, first of all, I want you to pray. Make, he said petitions, make intercessions, and then I want you to pray for all those that are in authority. Mm -hmm. That you, the church, may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because verse 4 tells you why. Mm. He says, who wishes all men to be saved. To recognize, perceive, and discern, and to know precisely and correctly the divine truth. So how are they going to know truth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I'm not doing what he says? My yes. God. Right now, it's very few. Because of all the, man, if you watch the news, you, you get deceived already. Mm -hmm. It's garbage. Mm -hmm. The news is garbage. I don't care what Fox, NBC, CDs, I don't care which one you call it out, it's still garbage. Mm. Why? Because this station don't like that station, this station is for this man, this station is for this man, so this station don't get stuff, and it's garbage. Yep. Because if I look at you long enough, I will find something out about you I don't like. Mm. And I can take and say it in a way that people are thinking that you're doing something that you really might not be doing, but it's the way I use my words. Yes. Mm. Why? Because my words have authority and power and influence. Yes. And I can choose to influence you for God, or I can choose to influence you for the enemy. Yes. So which do I choose? I choose to influence you for God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm about done. Mm. I'm really about done. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody tell me what the scripture says. I'm just going to read it. We'll see if I got any Bible styles in here. <laughs> For I am not ashamed mm. of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. King David verse, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody tell me what it said. Come on, I can't be the only one to know. You should know this scripture if you ain't ashamed of it. <laughs> you can say it out. I, I, I ain't no... Even if you don't say it out. Romans 8, Romans 6, 68, Romans 6. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good, man. Good. good job, baby. <laughs> well, I knew he was going to say something. Nobody else can grab me later. I knew he was. Come on. Y'all have to know these scriptures because it's key. And if you have to know what God is talking about. Mm -hmm. Romans 1.16. Yeah. I said I was going to tell them they were wrong. But they said so. What is it? And when you look at it, put it up there. Because this is why Jesus said we got to pray for those in authority. Mm -hmm. Because we don't understand something. If I want to change a man's heart, the only way to change a man's heart is to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? It's the love of God. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing. This is the one place that a person can come in any kind of way and leave out a different way. Yes. Why well, am I talking about this building? What's my name coming to God? 
the other, one of the ones he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care which version you put it in. There you go. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you seriously about this. This is a question for you individually. Because let me give you a question. I'm going to tell you where the church is. The church is not the buildings. Mm -hmm. And the buildings the young people say they were not going to come back to. It's the people. Yeah. Because, see, if we take and go outside, we can still have a service outside and not be in this building. Amen. We can go on 121, put our cars there, and block the road off, and have church in the middle of 121, and it's the same as having church here. Amen. Now, the law may come. <laughs> But if we do what we're supposed to do, the Holy Ghost will get there and they'll get it too. Yes, yes. Amen. So I'm saying that it's not the building, it's the person. Mm -hmm. So I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation from his wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior. So how are they going to believe the gospel if we're not preaching the gospel? Above all things, I wish, beloved, that you would have prayer of intercession for all those who are in authority, for kings and for rulers. Why? So that you can have a quiet and peaceable life. Why are we going to do this? So that people can really hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm living a quiet and peaceable life, I can speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Unfiltered. Unstained. Mm -hmm. Unblocked. But we got filters. Now, the United States don't get filters. There's certain things they say you can preach in certain states. Mm -hmm. Certain states they'll put you in jail for certain things you preach. But it's how you preach it. I can preach everything about the gospel and not break the law. Because if I do it in love. See, the thing about God is, even when you look at Jesus' life, when Jesus came on the scene in John, it was so amazing to me because the first thing that happened to Jesus was his mama seeing she was at a banquet. She was at, as bad as you at a party. Okay, let me break it down. 2021, you at a party. <laughs> Your party, Jesus' mama there, DJ playing, all of a sudden, the house just, hey man, we ain't got no more, we got no more drink. Everything gone. They don't drink at all. Go tell Jesus' mama. Mm. Well, what you got in the house? You got to go tell Jesus. I said, they out of drink. Now, this one gets me. He tells her, hey, ain't my time yet. Why are you trying to push me out there? Mm -hmm. But guess what? It was his mother. Amen. He was still under the authority of his mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he had fully went out yet. Amen. So he was still up on the authority of his mother. So Jesus said, okay, take it to the He would say, go bring me some pots. Fill them up with water. This will get me. They go get some clean pots. Yeah, he said, go get me some pots. They would just rush and grab some pots. Then what him? He blessed them. Now give them, take it to the guy of the house. He drank it. It tastes better than anything they had on the table before. Now, you at your party, Jesus turned your water to wine, what you gonna do? Mm. <laughs> 2021? Mm -hmm. Big Real, tell me y'all gonna be drunk. <laughs> you gonna keep partying? <laughs> when Jesus at the party. Mm. And you know what he didn't do? He didn't even stop the party. Mm -hmm. He just did the miracle. Mm -hmm. And the miracle was recognized by those who seen him do it. Mm -hmm. The master of the house never knew he did the miracle. Their guests never knew he did the miracle. Mm -hmm. All they knew was what they had to drink was better than what they had before. Yes, <laughs> yes. They would get lit in 2021. They would get lit. <laughs> then he moves on down. He starts going out. He gets his disciples. He pulls them in. He starts grabbing them in. Now he's going on his mission. Mm -hmm. Now he comes from under the rule of his mother. He's going on his mission. 
as he begins to go out, the Bible says that he meets a woman at a well. Now you gotta think about this. He meets a woman at a well in a place that Jews don't go. Jews don't go with, through Samaria. Jews don't deal with Samaritans. Okay. I don't know why. They don't like, they didn't like each other. Mm. Well, the Jews thought the Samaritans were kind of half breed, so they didn't really want to deal with them. Mm. That's 2021 later, so we understand. Mm -hmm. They were mixed. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to mess with them. So they didn't associate with them. They was beneath them. Mm -hmm. yes. So Jesus comes to this well and he meets this woman. No problem. In the Bible, in the different terms, they said he laid on the way. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he, he, he sprawled out. Woman mm. comes up, he gets some water, he got the moon. Mm. He said, give me some water. She said, like, you ain't got nothing to think of, man. <laughs> 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, what's going on with you? Mm -hmm. Why you gonna come this way and don't bring any drink? You got nothing, right? 2021, you got some money? Because <laughs> if I got to get with my cup, you got to pay me. 2021. Uh -huh. Jesus said, well, if you knew who it was and would ask you to give a drink, you would ask me for a drink. 2021. Man, stand up. Turn around. You ain't got nothing to drink with. What do I get from you? What do you got to offer me? What can you give me that I can't get from this cool water? Water refreshes me. Water revives me. Water makes me. What can I get from you that's better than this? Yes. Well, Jesus said one thing that really convicted her heart. He said, I'll look at your husband. Whoops. <laughs> now I get my business. You dip it. 2021, he knows it. Go get my husband. Wow. I didn't go get my husband. Mm -hmm. Well, go get your husband. Mm -hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. I don't have four, and I got one now, so that's five. Mm -hmm. He said, true. And the one who went nine to us. Mm -hmm. And this is what convicted her heart. He knew about her, but he didn't condemn her. Mm -hmm. See, the difference between the gospel is the gospel doesn't condemn a person. Mm -hmm. The gospel convicts a person's yes. heart Amen. to what a person Amen. wants to Amen. make a change. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. They don't do a 360. Mm -hmm. Because if I do a 360, I come back to the same place. Mm -hmm. yes. They do a 180. Mm -hmm. Because if I do the 180, now i got to walk away from it. Yes. Uh -huh. See, the difference is what Jesus is was greater uh -huh. than what she could ever get from a whale. Now, this whale well was not just any old whale. Well. Uh -huh. It was the whale well of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yeah. that was dubbed by the forefathers. It was a whale well that had been there supplying what for a long time. So many people have been to church and been to church that have been planted and grown, and they still uh -huh. can't get no water. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. You come to the church. You thirsty, mm -hmm. you drain, mm -hmm. you want some refreshment, and they don't offer you Jesus. Mm -hmm. They God. offer you everything but Jesus. Mm -hmm. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Why? Because it's unto salvation mm -hmm. to everyone who believes. Mm -hmm. See, we keep telling folks you got to stop doing things in order to get saved. And God has said, I ain't never said that. I said that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and rose and spirit, you shall be saved. But the heart may believe it, but with your mouth confession is made. I tell you, believe the same till your faith and actions meet together. Yeah. Hey.
leave him alone. Because right. what he had was greater than what she wanted. Yes. yes. Amen. She mm. went back and talked about so much to Samaria had a revival with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Then you go on to the centurion that had the son that ruled the that had the son that was sick and he was hurt that Jesus was in Galilee and that Jesus was coming through and he left home to go get Jesus because he knew that he had authority and power and he could heal. He come to his house and Jesus was talking and the man said, can you please come to my house? My son is sick unto death. He said, but if you come, I believe he can be healed. And Jesus said, go, your son is healed. Yes. Now this is what God needed. Hey. All he told the man was to go. go. Yes. Your son is healed. Uh -huh. yes. He didn't think about it. He didn't doubt it. He didn't do anything. Guess what happened? He believed Jesus. Yes. Yes. Until the act he called the hill on the Lord. Because yes. what his son is met him. Yes. See, his belief and the actions met together. Yes. Your son. So you've been waiting a long time. Let me tell you, the gospel is here. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. As he begins to travel, he, he begins to move around. He begins to do that. He, he'll even walk on water for you. Yes. He'll tell you to get in the boat while he go pray. Yeah. And as he begins to get in the boat, the waves and the sea will come against you. And when he get done praying, he'll walk on water just to come get you. There are some things that Jesus is walking on that's trying to take you on. Yes. And you wonder why you ain't going on yet? He's walking on it. So you don't go on him. And he's walking back to you. Yes, yes, yes. One of them had enough bread to say, Jesus, if it's you, bend me to come. Peter was bold. You want to talk about people with bold and bad. <laughs> yes, we talk about yes, Jews. Jews is in the one that he betrayed. Peter did a bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. yes, Peter did. walked out. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. And when he walked out, he was good. Uh -huh. Until he started looking at what he was walking on. Uh -huh. See, some of you start looking at what's holding you instead of looking at him. The Bible never says how close Jesus was because mm -hmm. he never got to him. Mm -hmm. All the Bible ever says is that Peter said the Lord saved him hey. and said Jesus reached down mm -hmm. and pulled him up. Yeah. Didn't beat him up, didn't ridicule him, didn't bash him up, just, just picked him up. Yeah, that's right. And took him to the Bible. Glory, glory. You wonder why people don't want to come to church. Uh -huh. Thank you. I'm into drugs. I don't need you to tell me what I'm in. Yeah. I know what I'm in when I walk through the door. Tell me how to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how to get set free. Yeah. Tell me how to lose the shackles. Yeah. Tell me how to get peace. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that's the beginning to keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he came to a multitude after he had been preaching all day. Yeah. That was hungry. Mm -hmm. And they ain't got enough money to go buy no food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a boy had a sandwich. Mm -hmm. And some bread. Mm -hmm. Two fish. Mm -hmm. Five loaves. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about this, because we think about these fish as being these great big fish. Nah, but mm -hmm. it was a boy. Mm -hmm. a little baby. His mama ain't gave him no whole fish. Mm -hmm. Not in them days. <laughs> He ain't got no whole fish. He might have had just the back, mm. the tail, <laughs> or he might have had the head. But he had the whole fish. Woo, glory, glory. <laughs> and Jesus took the little bit he had. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. So bring it here. Uh -huh. He put his hands on it. Woo, uh -huh. He blessed it. Uh -huh. He said, now don't distribute this out. In uh -huh. mama, uh -huh. in 2021, uh -huh. man, you must be crazy. Yes. We're going to take two fish, five 
bread and feed 5,000 men and we don't tell the women and children. Uh-huh. What are you on? <laughs> don't distribute. Uh-huh. This is what get me. When he blessed it, uh-huh. when they start distributing, they never ran out. Yes. They never ran out. They just kept giving. Yes. See, that's the thing about the gospel. He just keeps giving. Yes. He just keeps giving. Yes. He just keeps giving. Yes. He ain't never running out of what you need to sustain you, of what you need to revive you, of what you need to keep you. Why you in a place that where you can't get nothing? He don't think he won't provide for you. He's your Jehovah Jireh. I will provide. And they take up all those baskets of leftovers. Why you say, I'm not finished Yeah. I skipped my cousin. In the fifth chapter, he went to Jerusalem at the gate uh-huh. at the pool called Beautiful. Yeah. And says that, and, and this is, you got folks in the church like this man. Uh-huh. They've been in church a long time, but they just there. <laughs> they still waiting for the stirring. Uh-huh. God show up every Sunday and people get stirred up every Sunday. They still waiting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I ain't been moved yet. <laughs> still, God Amen. ain't moving in this place. Uh-huh. Now, everybody else, mm-hmm. Worshiping God, mm-hmm. they still sitting on the pew. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting mm-hmm. on the anointing <laughs> to stir me up mm-hmm. on my inside. Mm-hmm. But they're going to be waiting a long time mm-hmm. if they come here. Because mm-hmm. 12 30, we know. Out the door. 12 o'clock, we shut it down. They had to come next Sunday to try again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they keep that up. Uh, I'm here Sunday with 56 Sundays a year. Mm-hmm. They keep that up, they try. And they'll be like this man for 38 years coming to the gate, sitting that beautiful, mm-hmm. no, sitting at the city of the pool mm-hmm. that had five pillars. And I thought about this, the five pillars. Mm-hmm. Because what I don't understand is how can you be in church that long and still don't have nothing? Mm-hmm. My God. Amen. How do you be in a place that long that has so much to offer and you still ain't got nothing? My God. 38 years you ain't been stirred up. 38 years you ain't moved. Yes. 38 years you ain't got I'm waiting on something. That long. I don't want what you got. Don't try and put that on me. Keep that to yourself. I can pray for you from up here. Why? Because you've been there 38 years. You've been telling you know the pool gets stirred and you ain't moved yourself. You waiting on somebody to pitch you in. So Jesus says, man, get your bed up and walk. 30 years, mm-hmm. it ain't sure. Mm-hmm. But you say, mm-hmm. pick my bed up mm-hmm. and walk. Mm-hmm. 38 years, I ain't got nothing. Mm-hmm. You come up and say, pick my bed up and walk. And, walk. Mm-hmm. and the man picks up his bed <laughs> and begins <laughs> to walk. Mm-hmm. He waited for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Grace and mercy, mm-hmm. truth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Came and spoke to him. Amen. And he got up and he moved. Got up and he moved. Let <sighs> me wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you. We get to the end of his life. Mm-hmm. And he talks about something very peculiar. Mm-hmm. Because what we don't understand is the gospel is more than just what he did mm-hmm. as the miracle. The gospel is what he gave Amen. as in himself. Uh-huh. Yes. Amen. He did the miracles to get you to see what he gave. Uh-huh. He gave his life. Yes, he did. That's the gospel. Uh-huh. See, you can be in anything and God can bring you out of everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is nothing impossible for God but because of the state of the church. We have let the world believe that some things God just can't do because people are born like that. People are raised like that. People are taught that. But God says, I can bring you out of that. So Jesus went to the cross. Yes, he did. He was called every man, Ryan River, Beelzebub, friend of sinners. He was, you know, even when he met the woman that was naked and you know, he didn't look at her, but he didn't judge her. 
He just talked to the men that was around accusing her that you without sin cast the first stone. So my thing is, all y'all that's bashing, all y'all that's disgracing, you without sin cast the first stone. Because that's what Jesus did. And as they begin to walk away from the oldest, notice they didn't walk away from the youngest, the oldest began to walk away. See, that's the thing about God is he doesn't condemn you. He convicts you because all Jesus asked the woman was, he says, where are your accusers? She said, I have none, Lord. He said, need the lie to you. Yes. Go and sin no more. That woman was set free so much that during his way to Calvary, he was at a banquet. She barged into a banquet. Knelt down at a place she wasn't invited. Began to cry so much till the tears began to get on his feet till they got wet. And then she wiped them with her hair. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Why? He forgave her. So she took the very best that she had. She took her glory and washed the dirtiest part of his body because back then their feet were very dirty. When they went to a guest house, their feet had to be washed from walking and traveling and the sand and the clay getting on their feet, making their feet dirty. And his feet were really dirty, but she took her glory. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And he laid her down at his feet and began to wash his feet. He said, what she did, you will remember. Because this is for my burial. This is for my burial. She's already did it. She prepared my body for my burial. Now I have prepared my body for the dying. And he died for you. What meant this? It don't matter what you did. He died for it. I'm tired of this. It don't matter. He died for it. And on the third day, he rose and said, all power. In my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank he you. took the shots. Thank you. So people don't understand that victory that Jesus accomplished when he came out of the grave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He came out with the keys. Mm -hmm. He took the keys from the enemy. Mm -hmm. You don't got the keys no more. He looked at death and said, Where's the sting? He looked at the grave that held victory of all the saints of the past. He said, Grave, where is your victory? I got it. Because I got up. You couldn't hold me down. There is nothing anyone can do to hold you down if you accept Christ. Say, I'm done. You did all lie. Thank you for joining us. key to praying for the nation, the key to getting our nation where it needs to be is first for us that please us to get where we need to be and to do what God has called us to do. First Timothy 2 and 1 through 4 describes things that we're supposed to do for our nation. And when we do this, when we get lined up with this, God said his word would not go out for it. It will accomplish that which he sent it to do. So if I want to live a quiet and peaceable life here in the United States, I can do it if I do what God says, if I pray for it, if I make intercession for it, ah, if I cry out for it, for God to touch the hearts and the mind. Now you may be sitting there and you need God to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. I just told you that the enemy has no power over you. Jesus took it all. You have a choice. You can accept him. You can accept the benefits that come with accepting him. You can be in liberty. You can be in freedom. You can be in independence if you accept him. Father, I thank you for those that are online. God bless them. Touch them. Keep them. Watch over them. Protect them. God, meet them where they are. God, you came to folks in the New Testament. You met them where they were. 
whether you had to spit in the sand and make mud and put on the eyes, or whether you had to command them to take up their bed and walk, you met them where they were. And God, you offered deliverance, you offered healing. God, you set them free. So, Father, right now, we declare that your word go forth from Psalms 107 and 20. I sent my word to heal you and deliver you from your destruction. I declare that word over the online audience now in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you and God bless you. In the building, it is Independence Day. We are celebrating it and it is 4th of July. There are some great things about our country. And one of it is that I get to worship and serve a God that I love and I trust. Amen. I get to cry to a God that I love and I trust. That's one of the great things about being in this nation. I get the liberty of expressing myself in religion. I thank God for that. But then also God wants you to be free in your body, free in your mind. And if you need God to move in any way, you just raise your hand. And we'll pray for you. Come up here. It's very exciting. 
Uh, next Sunday, I will have it up to give you a glimpse of what it has to offer. Uh, we sure will have our logo and everything on it, so you'll be glad that we got it for you. But it's a gift from us to you, and it'll be a app that you just upload, and you've got a free access to all of them. And one more thing I want to add to that. So for the new guests that came today, because yep. you showed up and you worshiped with us, we want to extend that gift to you as well. So if you would like to um, receive that gift, we just need an email address and first and last name, and that's all we need. Yep. All right. If you have that gift from us, and it's for every member of Paul's ministry, banker and guest that all comes, right. you can have that gift. All right, we love you guys.